Amen. God bless you, ladies. Uh, beautiful. Bless you, can all the night. Let me say I'm honored to uh, be invited to come and be with you and to uh, hear God's word with you uh, in these services. And then sometimes since I've uh, been here to college praise, and I love appreciate this church and uh, what you do in this community. And I love the pastor and appreciate him and uh, his family as well. And I'm very thankful for the wonderful meal tonight. And the food says, Mexican food and uh, American food tonight is supposed to take a siesta. Right? <laughs> uh, so if I fall asleep preaching tonight, I don't know, uh, don't know what happened. Uh, you know, I, preachers are a little smarter than most people give us credit for. Uh, we, we know, uh, you know, you know, you feed the preacher before preaching and you hope you fill him up and he doesn't have any hair and you get out in 15 minutes. Uh, so uh, we'll be mindful of that. Tonight. If you have your copy of God's Holy Word, I uh, invite you to find Isaiah chapter 54, or 44, excuse me, Isaiah 44, we'll read verse 21 through 23. While well, you're turning there, everyone had a good day today? Amen. Hey. Been a Monday, right? All you people that uh, were hoping for a warm weather a few months ago, I uh, hope you're happy now. <laughs> I, I love the warm weather. I can stand the heat better than I can in the cold. I don't complain when uh, we get the warm weather. For some, it may just spend Monday all day long. Yeah. Uh, we're glad you're here in God's house tonight. I'll be at 44 and begin reading verse 24. Remember these, O Jacob, Israel. Now my servant, I have four of these. Now my servant, the Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have blotted out as a thick cloud of thy transgression, as a cloud of thy sin. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye war part of the earth. Break forth in the season, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Father, again, we're thankful for another day of life that you've given to us. Father, we're thankful for this your church, your good pastor and family. Father, we pray your rich blessings to be upon this church body. Father, we realize that one thing we need maybe more than anything else is revival. Father, in our individual life, the church, and family, in our country. Father, we pray for that tonight. Father, may it again. Uh, right here in this pulpit, in this heart. And Father, we pray that uh, our hearts are stirred and that you, that we as your people will come rejoicing and praising you, glorify your name, that lost sinners may hear the gospel, they may see the gospel go about in your church and in your people. And Father, they might come to know Jesus for its everlasting joy. Father, forgive us now our sin. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think everyone here tonight has agreed that there's a need for revival. What America needs is revival. It's not going to happen in the White House. Uh, we can pray it happens in the church house. And in our family houses, that revival comes. You know, everywhere you go, you hear people say, we need revival. Well, you go to churches and hear someone say, we need revival. Someone will say, well, the choir needs revival. Uh, <laughs> or the choir leader needs revival. Or the preacher needs revival. Or no, the young people need revival. Our, our young people need, need revival. Or maybe young people say, no, the older people, our senior adults, they need revival. But hardly do you ever hear someone say, I need revival. I'm always thinking someone else. Someone else. Somebody needs revival. Can I tell you tonight that revival is a very personal experience? 
Can I tell you tonight that you can experience revival personally this week, even if this church does not experience revival? You can experience, you can be uh, the spark of revival. But first of all, we have to be honest enough to admit that we need it. We've got to be honest enough with God and ourselves to admit that we need it. Sad to say, a lot of people tell you, I don't need anything. And, and we are so glad. Uh, if you're not thankful to be an American, then uh, go somewhere else. Amen. We are so blessed to be an American, so blessed in this country, have so many blessings. And, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, we don't have need of anything. I'm going to tell you, we have need of God. And we have need of revival in our life. We have to be honest enough to admit that we need it. And then we must be desperate enough to want it. Have you ever been desperate for anything? So much that you wanted that. You were craving that. Desperate for it. Can I, can I just get it again? Can I have it again? Uh, those that uh, know me well know that I love Dr. Pepper. Uh, you know, people, when I grow up, I'm going to learn how to drink it. And, uh, if I ever get it to taste as good as it smells, I'd drink a bucket for it. And I just can't get it to taste as good. But I love Dr. Pepper. We were coming back from Springfield, Illinois. Dennis, our son, and his family traveling with us, and our two youngest grandchildren. And we come through uh, Circe and see a side. They, they got a lot of birds in Circe. Y'all know that? <laughs> Water, you know, I thought that's just something you got in Texas. But, uh, there are a few in Arkansas now. And so we stopped there. The kids were wanting something to eat. We stopped there. And I wasn't all that hungry. But uh, on the sign, when we got inside, there was a sign that said, Dr. Pepper Shake. Not, not float. Not a Dr. Pepper float. But Dr. Pepper Shake. This preacher... I was desperate for it. <laughs> I had to have one. I thought, man, I, I've got to get one of those Dr. Pepper shakes. And so I ordered one. I got it. And I asked my three-year-old grandson, and this is son. I came back to the table, and he was eating some chicken nuggets or something. And he looked at me, Granddaddy, what's that? What's that? I said, well, Nash, it's a Dr. Pepper shake. I said, you want to try it? He said, yeah. And, and I gave it to him. He took the sip out of it. Man, he, he can have the biggest eyes of some kind. He, he lit up and he said, Granddad, what is that? <laughs> Man, you know, he didn't like Granddad. He, he liked that Dr. Pepper shape. We have to be desperate enough to ask God to bring the Bible. You know, if you think about it, God hardly ever works outside of desperate people. Desperate people. I'm afraid that we've not become desperate enough while we don't experience the Bible today uh, in our lives and the lives of our church. And Jesus said, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Are we hungry? Are we thirsty? Are we thirsting after righteousness? Do we have a desperation for a renewal in our heart and our spirit with the spirit of God, revival uh, within us? Now, uh, the prophet Isaiah uh, gives us a recipe, if you will, and I like it when uh, God just lays it out there for us. And, uh, there, there are three words that he uses here in these three verses uh, that tell us uh, of how to find it. First one is remember. Remember. Look back at verse 21. Remember these, O Jacob, Israel, that are my servant. I form thee, that are my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten me. I blotted out in a thick cloud by transgression, as a cloud by sin, return to me, for I have redeemed thee. Remember. Remember. You know, uh, lost people can't have a Bible. 
Most people need light. Uh, revival is a reviving of what is something that's already there. Uh, we save people are the ones that need revival. We need to pray, pray for uh, salvation for lost people, not revival, that they may know Jesus, that they may hear the gospel, that they may trust him uh, as their savior. But we, as God's people, we can experience revival and we must do it by remembering it. Remember, oh Jacob, I have formed thee. Remember, oh Jacob, uh, you are mine. Are you a child of God tonight? Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, uh, Jesus writing to the church uh, in the book of Revelation said, Never laugh, I said, have somewhat against thee that I have left thy first love. Have we left our first love? Do we need to go back and remember uh, our salvation uh, through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the salvation of the Lord uh, that he has given to us? He went on to say, Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Remember, remember how uh, revival begins with remember. Well, what's he say? First of all, I said, Remember where you came from. Remember where you came from. Remember, O Jacob, I have formed thee. Regardless of what anyone's ever told you, none of you were found in a cactus patch under a cactus. That's right. God formed them. God created us. Remember where you came from. Uh, we are the creation of God. We are here tonight because God formed us. We exist because God formed us. And God created us uh, as we are, man and woman, nothing else. That's it. Man and woman. Uh, we've been at church camp the last couple of weeks. And the uh, week before last, we were there with the teenagers. This past week, we were uh, with the kids. But the teenage uh, camp... I was asked to do a couple of breakout sessions for boys, and uh, of course my son was kind of in charge of some of that. And lo and behold, what he gave me was manhood and dating. On and I celebrated 46 years, maybe July. What am I going to tell guys, teenagers now about dating? Well, uh, I did tell them about manhood. You know, there's malehood, boyhood, and manhood. And some people never uh, get past boyhood. We need godly men uh, in America today. But I did tell them that there's only two sexes. Two sexes. Jerks and jerkheads. <laughs> That's us. That's what God made. And that jerkhead can love this jerk because God loved him. Because God gave me eternal salvation. Gave me and my sins and uh, redeemed me. We are made as we are. Remember, God formed us. God created us. Don't try to be something God didn't intend for you to be. Be who you are. Be who God created. Remember, God has formed you. Then also, He said, Remember what God has done for you. God done anything for you. Remember, Jacob, uh, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression, as a cloud thy sin, return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. He used that word, transgression. God said, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression. What is a transgression? It's an individual act of sin. And yes, we're all guilty. We're all guilty. You know, I, I, I'm just an old country boy. Uh, God allowed me to keep a center missionary back to the church out of Christ for a long time now. And, uh, you know, when I say center, some people think I'm saying yes, I, N, N, E, R. <laughs> and that's right. That's all of us are centered. Every, every one of us are centered. But he said, I blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression. I have blotted them out. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 17. For thou hast cast thy sin behind thy back. You ever try to get to anything right in the middle of your back? You'll wear yourself out. 
can't do it. Uh, even the old rubber Indian man that the kids used to have, I mean, it's hard to twist that way. It's hard to get back there. I, he said, I, I blotted them out. Uh, I put them behind my back. Psalms chapter 103, verse 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. Or the east is from the west. Now you can measure north and south. You can measure north and south. You can head out uh, north and you're going to get to the North Pole and you're going to turn and go south. Or are you going to be there, I guess? You can't measure east and west. You start out east and you just keep going east. Keep going east. Keep going east. Keep going east. As long as you're going that way, you're going east. What did God say? I have... Put them as far as the east is from the west. Why? Why do we keep carrying around all of our transgressions? Well, we say we give them to God. We say we come and seek forgiveness of them, but then we want to pick them back up and put that load on us. And here God said, I put them away as far as the east is from the west. Would we give it to God? Remember what He has done for us. He has forgiven us. Micah chapter 7, verse 19. Thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. How deep is the ocean? Anybody know? Any scientists in here tonight? Well, I'm told there are places that are deeper than 200 or more feet, even deeper than that. There are places in the ocean that not yet uh, even uh, been looked at. The depths of the ocean. He said, I've cast their sins uh, into the depths of the sea. There's a, an old black preacher. He was a slave. He got saved. He even started preaching when he was a slave, even during uh, the Civil War time. He become a mega church pastor before there was such a thing as a mega church pastor. He was told that uh, a black preacher couldn't preach to, uh, in a white church, but he started a church, and that church ultimately had over 2,000 people attending his church, black and white alike. He was a great preacher, just a simple slave, but he was a great preacher, and uh, he was in his office one day, and uh, his secretary was close by, and she heard John Jasper just shouting. He was just uh, shouting in his office, and she ran in there and said, Brother Jasper, what, 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 what's going on? What's wrong? He said, oh, he said, I just read the Bible. The cop said he had cast my sins into the depths of the sea, and he said, oh, Satan would drown before he could ever bring them back. <laughs> Do we remember? Do we remember what God has done for us? He said our transgression. And then he said our sin. Remember, God uh, has put as a cloud thy sins. He's covered them as a cloud. Uh, anybody ever told you to go to hell? Maybe that hadn't happened. <laughs> Guess what? I ain't going. Hey. <laughs> I ain't going. My sins are covered by the blood of Jesus. He has uh, redeemed me. Remember, I have redeemed thee. You know, that word redeemed has the idea of, uh, of, of a cost. Uh, there's a price that uh, has to be paid. Uh, I have redeemed thee. I have paid the price. I have purchased you. Listen to what Peter wrote, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, 19. You are not redeemed with corrupt things like silver and gold, but you have been redeemed by the precious blood uh, of Christ as a lamb without blemish, without spot. Purchased, purchased us. He redeemed us. We have been purchased by God through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, after all of the slain by the block of sin. Redeemed. We don't have to be ashamed of the blood of Jesus. Redeemed. Redeemed. You know, history tells us that President Abraham Lincoln attended a slave auction. 
There was a young lady that was on the slave block and she was being auctioned off. President Lincoln bought that slave. After that auction, she came to him and said, Master, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do? And Abraham Lincoln said, I invite you for you to do something or come with me. You are free. You are free. He said, I'm going with you. I'm going with you. You have caught me and you're telling me I'm free. I'm going to be with you and I'm going to stay with you continually. Listen, Jesus Christ brought up off of the slave block of sin and he has set us free. If we'll remember that, we can experience revival uh, in our life. We don't have to be ashamed of, of the blood of Jesus. We sing an old hymn that says, Saved by the blood of the crucified one, now ransomed from sin and a new work begin. Sing praise to the Father. Praise to the Son. Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. My sins are all pardoned. My guilt is all gone. Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. By the blood of the crucified one. Amen. Saved by the blood of Jesus. Not only do we remember that he has taken care of our transgressions, he's taken care of our sin, but he said, remember the promise I gave you. Listen to what he said. Uh, I have covered your transgression. I've covered your sin. I have redeemed thee. And remember he said, I will not forget thee. I will not forget thee. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. You ever feel like you're forgotten? Y'all ever forget anything? Y'all got some good laughs. Yeah, you ever forget your wife's birthday? You know. You ever forget an anniversary day? You know, we may forget. You know, and, and sometimes we don't understand. But I've seen it played out too many times. With the children, our children's home, Texas County. God said, a, a, a mom, a mother, can give birth to a child. At some point in the life of that child, that mother can forget that child. Listen to this How can that be? How can that happen? Can I assure you that God says, I'll not forget you. I'll not forget you. I will be with you. I saw something someone said, if I die today, I'll be with you. If I live today, Jesus will be with me. So I'm going to be with Jesus in one way or the other. Now, whether I live or whether I die, I am with Jesus. You know, God said, I'll be with you. I, I'll not forget you. When the sun shining, I'll be with you. When the cloud is dark, uh, I'll be with you. When uh, things are great, I'll be with you. When things are terrible, when things are everything going wrong, I'll be with you. Remember the promise he gave, I will not forget you. And also remember why God saved us. Why God saved us. Look what he said again back in uh, verse 24. I inform thee, thou art my servant. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I hate to disappoint you. God didn't save us because we're cute and fuzzy and beautiful and all those things. He, that's not why he said that. He said, Thou art my servant. Can I tell you tonight, we're never more like Jesus than when we're serving Him. When we're serving God, when we're faithful to Him, when we're dedicated to Him, uh, whether it's good or bad, whether we feel like it or not, uh, we are going to serve our Lord, our Savior, God. Almighty. If you are saved by the grace of God, quit whining and murmuring and serve God. Amen. Experience the joy of the Lord's salvation uh, in your life. Remember, God has saved us. We are His servants. Really servants. Hey, well, you know, I, I just don't understand it. You know, why God didn't put me here. Why God not allow me to do this or allow me to do that? And 
Uh, you know, a lot of people, well, I, I just want to be in the spotlight. I, I want to be seen. I want to be heard. You know, ask us, are we doing what God has already instructed us? Are we doing what God uh, has told us to do? We know that he has told us to do. Are we being obedient unto that? Why would he ask us to do more when we're not even doing what we know? When we're not even serving him in the capacity that we're serving. No, not everybody is called a preach. Uh, not everybody can sing beautifully. Uh, man, you, you know, I, I wish I could sing. I wish I could play an instrument. But I can't even play a radio without a static. Uh, you know, I, I, I tell people, my kids, my kids can sing beautifully. My grandchildren are getting that. But, and I tell everybody they got it from me because their mother and grandmother still got it. I, I don't have it. But when we use what God has given us to serve Him, to glorify Him, don't remember. We remember life that God has forgiven you. He put a cloud over your transgression, over your sin. We remember uh, what God's done for you. We remember how, how He has saved us. How He said, I will not forgive you. You know, the second thing God said to the prophet I had here is return. Remember, return. Look at uh, verse 22 again, the last part of that. Return unto me. For I have redeemed you. Return. Return unto me. Now, what does God say? Return unto me. God's invitation tonight for all of us is come. Come. God's invitation for lost people is come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come know Jesus as your personal. Come know the gospel. Come know the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Come know that Jesus is alive. He lived today because he lived. Uh, you and I can have eternal life through him. Come is God's word of invitation for us that know the Lord, for us that are saved. The same word, come. But here it is, come back. Come back. Their need for Bible, the Bible life is the life. God saved them. Come back. Come back. Remember your first time. Has there been a drifting in our life? Oh, you remember uh, when you trusted the Lord as your Savior? Uh, you were gloriously redeemed by the grace of God, excited with joy, uh, ready to uh, attack hell with a water pistol. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go serve God with everything I have. Have we lost it? Have we drifted? Where is the joy of the Lord's salvation uh, in our heart and our life? Um, some of my friends, what few friends I have, are in the process of restoring my 1951 Chevrolet pickup. My great grandfather, uh, who was a blacksmith, off this truck in 1951, brand new. My grandfather sold it to me in 1973. I was a junior in high school uh, for $500. I have the bill of sale, the service policy, everything on that truck. So we started the process nearly a year ago now, I guess, of uh, restoring it. Right now it's in 100, 200 different pieces. But Ron and I, as a matter of fact, Ron actually drove that truck to work right after we married. I was commuting to the seminary. Uh, we were carpooling, and the day I had to have the car to get all the preachers to Little Rock, she would drive that 1951 uh, Chevrolet truck. Yes, it's a three on the tree, uh, standard, and, 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 and she did it. I look back at that, now I think, how in the world did she do it? She did. Ask her about meeting a wide load on a narrow bridge. After that, she didn't want to downshift. That's another story. So we, we used to enjoy riding in that truck. We, even after our girls were born, we were plastering out Pleasant Hall from where Cody's uh, grandma was, and oh, we loved that place so, so much. What a, what a dear saint of God. We, we would put the girls in a little old seat on that uh, bench seat, and we'd travel around the country roads out uh, uh, Jefferson County, and we enjoyed it. Uh, there was an elderly couple that had an old truck similar to that, and they decided to take a drive one day, and they got out in that old truck, and they were riding out through the country roads, and before they knew it, they made a mistake and got it on a, a state highway. Uh, Grandma sitting over here on the passenger side next to the door. Grandpa was driving. 
They're going down that road, and all of a sudden, Red Ball looked in the rear view mirror, and there's a, a car that comes up behind them. Uh, and one of them had kind of little sports cars, and he looked back at, uh, uh, he said, Grandma, look, look behind me. He said, it looks like there's a, one person in that car, or he would say, uh, one-headed monster. It kind of, kind of looks strange. Well, uh, you, I know, y'all remember back then. Well, it was a young couple. And that young lady was screwed right up to that young man. You ever that word screwed? <laughs> you heard that? They were going right up next to him. They were trying to. Grandmother looked at Grandpa and said, Grandpa, I remember when we used to ride in this old truck, just like that young couple, all close together, all screwed up together, riding in the joy of life. Grandpa looked at her. She's sitting on the pastor's side next to the door. He's sitting on the steering wheel. He looked at her and he said, I haven't moved. <laughs> okay? Yeah. I haven't moved. You know what God is saying to us tonight? I haven't moved. Yeah. Jesus Christ, yesterday, today, and forever. Always the same. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. God hasn't moved. If there is a need for us to return, it's because of me. It's because of you. It's not because of God. It's not because of Jesus. We are the ones that uh, have strayed away. We are the ones that drifted off the straight and narrow. We are the ones that need a revival and to come back to God. So remember and then return. And then the last word in verse 23 is rejoice. Rejoice. Look what he says. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout ye the Lord parts of the earth. Break forth from the singing in pounds and go forth. Every tree, therefore, uh, for the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Sad to say, there doesn't seem to be a lot of joy filled people in the world today. I want to tell you. Saved people should be the most joyous people there are in the world. We should be the happiest, joyful people uh, of anyone else. Uh, you know, I tell people we can have more fun by accident as children of God uh, than lost people can on purpose. You know, they're going out there trying all these things. Sorry about that. Turn that off. That was God, we might not listen to <laughs> Joy. He said, remember, return, rejoice. Rejoice. Where is the joy? See, you, you, don't, you don't sing because you can sing. You sing because it's, I can turn it off. They won't be answered that. Sorry about That other happy job. <laughs> Thankfully, my ringtone is just a duck. <laughs> Brother Johnny Brewster's is a donkey. <laughs> I've heard it in service before, too. <laughs> so he said, Rejoice. Rejoice. Have we lost our joy? The psalmist says, Psalm 40, has put a new song in my heart. Even free of our God. You, you don't have to have talent to have joy. You don't have to have talent to praise the Lord. You don't have to have talent to lift up your voice uh, and give glory to a holy God. Psalm 85 and verse 6, you've heard it many times in revival services. God is saying, the, the, the psalm writer is writing, Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice? How do we come to church? And we come to church, look like we've just been sucking on the wind. And then we wonder why we don't get anything out of church. And, I, you know, I, I just don't get much out of it. Do our hearts come prepared for joy? Come prepared. I'm saved. I'm redeemed. I'm forgiven. 
and I'm going to go and worship God. I'm not going for that preacher. I'm not going for anyone else. I'm going for myself because God has saved me and redeemed me, and I want to give honor and glory to this holy and matchless name. Amen. God's word of invitation has come. If you're here tonight and you're lost, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. You know the Lord is your Savior. Come back. Come back. Would you stand with me tonight? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Father, we just praise your will not be done. Let's pray for you. We pray in Jesus. Amen. Brother Cody, God has said before you tonight. God is speaking. Would you respond? This altar is going to be open. And we'll just come and kneel and pray. Just you and the Lord. Right there where you are, you'll just kneel and pray. Just you and the Lord. Uh, would you come? You need Jesus. Would you trust him tonight? Would you come back tonight? Uh, would you come uh, to know joy unspeakable, the glory of the Lord, that you may rejoice in the Lord?